Welcome back to Let's Play Canon Standard Edition for the PC. In the last episode, we met Tristan Taylor, I mean Kitagower. And, yeah, there's also a girl in the snow. Exciting day at school. The girl outside looks up, as though that's what she'd been waiting for. I know that face. The girl I met in the snow. I've just remembered something I need to do. Standing up, running out. Hey, we've still got homeroom. I'll be back in a moment. Ignoring Phyllis' shouts from Kitagawa, I enter the corridor. But my voice gives me super strength. Come back, you witchy, come back. Running past the stuff. A little few people were present. I take the stairs in bounds. Yuichi, come back! I was just kidding! The scene visible outside the window is white and lonely. Running down the corridor, I look for the metal doors I saw yesterday. They must lead to the area I seek. As I push open the doors, a gust of freezing wind blows in from outside. I force the cold. The heavy doors open and leap outside. Their air, incomparably colder than inside, bites into my skin wherever it's uncovered. Freezing. Narrowing my eyes against the dazzling reflections, I look around. The second year classrooms must be over there. The school grounds are ridiculously large, of course. It didn't lead to the quad. If the area below the window actually is a quad, nevertheless, I pick a suitable direction and begin walking. What am I doing? This question provokes a deep sigh. I plod on, my body confirming with every step that yesterday was indeed warm. Soon, the back of the school building shrouds my view. Here I am. A field of white. The drifted snow reveals few traces of human passage. A vast silent space. At the center of the carpet of snow, there stands a lone girl. Like yesterday, the snow has gathered on her head. A short girl, her skin whiter than ever snow was. No, it's not, Yuichi. No, it's not. Look. Not on her head. That's snow. That's like dandruff, actually. But it's not the same color as her skin, as you can clearly see. Don't say it's that pale. Her tiny body wrapped protectively in her shawl. Smiling gently, she opens her mouth to speak. Without a doubt, this is the girl I met yesterday with Ayu. I saw someone who didn't look like a student in the quad. So I came to have a look. She bows politely, sliding the snow off her hand and clothes. It must have snowed some without me noticing. She's not moved at all. The snow at her feet is practically undisturbed. Having removed the last of the snow, the girl raises a finger to her lips. In what? She utters this with a faint smile, a smile I didn't get to see yesterday, a smile more wistful than sweet. So, why were you standing out here during class without a uniform? Playing hooky? She replies with a smile. The smile doesn't quite fit with the and she had an impression of her. So, what are you doing? Okay, let me get it straight. You have bad health, so you decide to come out in the freezing cold and wait there for over two hours. Dude! That's not very smart. She lowers her eyes, sadly. I 
Yeah, and I don't think waiting in the snow for two hours for no particular reason is helping. Come to think of it, her expression has constantly shown traces of pain. Maybe the wistful atmosphere I detected earlier wasn't entirely my imagination. I don't know well or I should ask you this, but... What illness do you have? A cloud falls over her face. She pauses, eyes downcast, and continues slowly. So you have a cold, so the perfect way to get rid of a cold is to come out in the freezing cold and wait two hours wearing that. Are you crazy? A cold? I was, you know, expecting it to be more complicated. Somehow that was the impression I'd had. And her voice drops as though she's generally apologizing. Well, that certainly sounds more complicated, but I bet it means the same. I'm not complaining, at least it's nothing contagious. Snuck out? What is that? At least your family cares. Laying a finger across her mouth, she lowers her voice secretively. How long have you been here? So, how long have you been here? I first noticed her at the end of the second period. Of course, viewer or viewers, if we had chosen the other option, we would be going into her story, but we're not going for her story, not this time around. She thinks for a while, then continues. This morning? Does she mean she was already here when class began? I didn't think that would be a problem, but... Won't standing out here like this be bad for you if you're sick? Oh, you fool, I had to face palm at that one. I feel she is deflecting the question slightly. Colds can be nasty. And why am I starting to think of Yuichi as Squall from Final Fantasy VIII? I don't know. I've never had much of a problem, but I can see how this might be an unpleasant time of year for someone weaker. Speak for yourself. She flashes me a smile. Her cold must be pretty mild. You know, I can't actually see many symptoms. Anyway, what do you mean for ages? The semester's only just started. I don't see how two days off school can count as ages. What's with that smile? Seriously, she nods, smiling broadly. So different from the timidly... Timidly... She showed at our first meeting. Timber! And this cheerful behavior isn't quite in keeping with the sad, lonely girl who was gazing up at the school building earlier. There's definitely something funny about her. That's the only conclusion I can draw from our conversation. I'm Aisawa Yuichi. I'm a second year here now, but I just changed schools this week. Dude, in the anime you only gave your first name. She bows. Masaka? The name makes me feel slightly uneasy. Masaka. What's wrong? Oh, damn it's your line. Sorry about that. No, it's nothing. 
Screw it, I might as well do one voice. Are you laughing at my name? She murmurs sadly. No, not at all. I'm just sure I've heard it somewhere before. She speaks up suddenly. So suddenly that it takes me a moment to realize that she's addressing me. What? I thought you were waiting for someone. I've had enough for one day, do you hear me? I've had it! I've had enough to hear with this damn school. I see. Oh no, it's been a pleasure. She turns and makes her way off over the snow. Um... You look kind of strange like that. You look like an owl. Your head is turned back way further than I thought possible. Maybe it's just the anime... Well, the drawing type, whatever. Who cares? At my voice, she turns her head curiously. You're kind of creepy. Don't worry, it's nothing. I'm not sure myself what I'd wanted to say. Maybe I just wanted to delay her departure. Okay, and you can call me Onichan. Just kidding. With a bow and a smile, she begins to walk away. She bows again as she passes me. I hope you get better. I think about her as I watch her disappear. What did she actually come here for? Not so much an unusual girl as downright strange. I guess I'd better go home too. Following her tracks, I head back towards the entrance. And with that, we conclude this part of Let's Play Canon. And the next part, or the part after that, is definitely going to be one of the next two parts. We are going to encounter the girl in which story we're going to proceed to go for for the first part of this LP. See you next time.